That's perfect. Okay. Okay, we can start. Phil. Hello. Ciao. Allora, sono in collegamento con Phil Palmer. Um, lui non capisce l'italiano, o forse lo capisce, però io ritengo che Phil sia eh, oggi forse uno dei più importanti chitarristi al mondo, perché perché l'esperienza che ha fatto lui don't, don't do this face it means that you, 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 you learn Italian so uh, you, 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 you understand Italian okay. uno dei <ride> eh, mm. perché? perché ha fatto delle esperienze incredibili lui ha suonato con le più grandi star da Eric Clapton addirittura Eric Clapton gli dava gli assoli da fare eh, Dire Straits quindi Mark Knopfler ha suonato in vari dischi da, 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 da David Silvian a Iggy Pop eh, italiani ha fatto produttore anche di molti dischi anche di Renato Zero e di altri allora eh, mi sono collegato con lui perché? perché sicuramente lui avendo vissuto a Londra avendo fatto session ha conosciuto Jeff Beck che è volato via è volato nell'altra dimensione una perdita importantissima uh, Phil I, I think that uh, the fact that Jeff Beck is no more here is a big loss Are you, uh, do you agree? I totally agree Jeff was utterly unique in what he did he did it beautifully he practiced all the time which was something that I noted when I met him. Uh, right up to five minutes before a show, he would be in the dressing room noodling away. And all this wonderful stuff would come out. But it was, it was his technique which was so unique to him. And I love the things that he did with the whammy bar. I mean, I can't pretend to even get close to doing that. But also, he, he used the volume control on, on the guitar in a beautiful way. I, I use a pedal instead, but he used to do it with, just with his hand. And that was, that was unique to him. I, I never really saw anyone do that with, with the precision and the beauty that he did. But it gave him a great expression in the way that he played. Allora gli ho chiesto, è una grande perdita la perdita di Jeff Beck? E lui mi ha detto sì, è una, una perdita enorme eh, perché, perché eh, lui aveva una tecnica unica. Inoltre lui aveva una cosa incredibile, che lui provava sempre. Anche prima di andare sul palco lui provava, provava, provava. E poi eh, mi ha detto che lui usava il, il volume della chitarra. Normalmente c'è un pedale che alza e abbassa il volume della chitarra, lui invece lo faceva con, con il volume proprio della chitarra, aveva, aveva una, una tecnica unica. Ma Phil ha suonato insieme a Jeff Beck. Phil, did you play with Jeff? With Jeff? He guested on a couple of occasions when I was working with Eric Clapton. Uh, once at the Albert Hall and I think somewhere in, in Los Angeles when we were doing a gig there with Eric and he just showed up one night and uh, joined in and I used to just stand in amazement really uh, in the same way that um, uh, Eric and I watched Stevie Ray Vaughan um, we were both kind of blown away by the way he played it was so good and so precise and so unique allora gli ho chiesto se ehm, lui ha suonato con Jeff Beck lui dice sì, ho, ho condiviso il palco con lui perché quando suonavo con Eric Clapton un, un, alcune volte lui è salito sul palco ed, ed eravamo tutti così perché aveva questa tecnica io, io lo guardavo con, con grande ammirazione um, Phil, which, which part of the career because Jeff, allora Jeff ha avuto vari momenti della sua carriera con gli Yardbirds da solo, poi ha avuto Back Bogart and Deppis, eh, da solo era poi l'inizio era con Rod Stewart al, al, alla voce, poi, e in seguito ha avuto una elettrificazione della chitarra. Um, Phil, uh, uh, Jeff had uh, many periods of life, of artistic life, the first with the Yardbirds. He was the, the Harry Clapton substitute. Uh, the second part was a solo career with uh, Rod Stewart at the beginning, after with Beck Bogart and Epis, uh, ex Vanilla Fudge, and, and, and after more electrified, more jazzy, more, more funky. Yes, which part of, of his career do you prefer, of his way to play? Um, I think he gradually developed into, uh, into 
well, Jeff, Jeff Beck um, over the, the later years of his, his career. But um, obviously he started in the same place as, as Eric did with the Blues. Uh, and I think after, the, the, after his, he did an album called, um, what's it called? <laughs> What was that album called? It was a lovely kind of instrumental album uh, with Phil Chen and a couple of other really good players. And it was it was the first time that Jeff Beck started to do something unique um, and particular to him. Uh, and I think at that point, I mean, people often ask me uh, who I preferred between the two of them, Eric, Eric or Jeff Beck. And I think at that point, they became two different players, and um, Eric stayed in his blues world, and and Jeff Beck became something unique. Allora, eh, lui ha accennato un brano di un album solo di, di Jeff Beck, un, brano, un album strumentale, e, e, e che gli piace molto, e ha detto che. Eh, tutti chiedono a, a tutti hanno sempre chiesto a Phil, visto che ha suonato con entrambi, li conosce molto bene, eh, se preferiva Eric Clapton, Eric Slow and Clapton o Jeff Beck. E lui eh, ha sempre detto che Eric Clapton è rimasto nello stile blues, mentre Jeff Beck ha creato un qualcosa di unico. Erano, eh, erano diversi i due. Um, were, they, were they friends? Eric yeah. Clapton and oh. They were for, I mean, they were rivals at the same time, but there was a, it was a very friendly rivalry. There's a nice story. I was working, I think, with Eric, and, um, and Jeff was backstage. And um, Jeff, Jeff went on and did his set, and he came off again, and he was grumbling about something. He was unhappy that he'd, he'd messed something up. And um, there was a great sort of moment between the two of them where... Uh, where Eric said to him, um, listen, man, if you haven't got it right by now, you better get another job. And I think that was, um, that was you know, an example of the, uh, the friendly rivalry between them. But why was, was, was Jeff unhappy or what happened? He, he just, he just done a set and he'd, he'd messed something up or he, did, he didn't quite go the way he'd hoped it, it would. Um, I mean, it was a... a stupid little mistake that he made. I, I didn't even notice it myself. But uh, he was obviously upset by, by that. Um, I mean, you know, p players sometimes don't get it right. Eric sometimes get it right. I don't always get it right. I try. <laughs> But um, that, it was just a, a moment where Jeff had, had done something and he was a bit grumpy with himself that he didn't get, get it as quite as precise as he wanted. But nobody would have noticed apart from Jeff. <laughs> allora eh, gli ho chiesto se Jeff Beck era amico di Eric Clapton e detto sì, avevano un, uno splendido rapporto. Dice: Ricordo una volta che Jeff, eh, dopo l'esibizione, era, era molto arrabbiato perché secondo lui aveva fatto un errore. E Clapton gli ha detto: Senti, ma se, 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 se non superi queste robe qui, c'è cioè meglio che fai un altro lavoro perché, perché tutti fanno errori. Fra l'altro, dice. No, io non l'ho notato l'errore che ha fatto Jeff e credo che neanche credo che nessuno abbia notato l'errore che ha fatto Jeff mentre suonava tranne lo stesso eh, Jeff um, and uh, listen uh, was he a strange man because my opinion is that la mia opinione è che lui fosse timido fosse uh, schivo non si sa niente della vita privata di Jeff Beck, mentre sai tutto, che ne so, Eric Clapton, le, le storie d'amore, le, 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 le cose con, 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 con George Harrison, eccetera. No? Di Jeff non si sa niente. Uh, so, we know everything about, for example, Eric Clapton, love stories, things like that. We know everything, sappiamo tutto anche di, di Phil Palmer, Numa, eccetera. We know everything about Phil, Numa, but we, know, we don't know anything about Jeff. Was he shy? Was he shy? Yeah, he was shy and just a bit private. Um, he, he was into cars. I don't know if you know that. He, was, he would love to mess around with his cars and he would take, you know, strip them down, take the engines out, and do all kinds of things. And he was famous for showing up with with grease on his hands because he'd been doing something in the car. 
um, just before. Um, so it was, um, I think, yeah, he he didn't take the music thing as quite as seriously as, as some other people. He, he enjoyed his life. He had other things apart from from playing the guitar in his life. And uh, I think he kept that to himself, which is fair enough. Sì, dice, non si sa molto della sua vita privata, a parte, un fa a parte una cosa, che amava le auto, quindi amava le sue auto e molte volte si faceva vedere con del grasso nelle mani perché era stato lì a, a, a lavorare attorno alle sue auto e, e dice, no, non era uno che viveva solo per la musica, eh, ma viveva per le sue passioni, che, soprattutto le auto. Ma quali auto aveva Jeff Beck? But which kind of cars uh, had Jeff Beck? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I, he was a bit of a collector, I think. I think he was keen on big American muscle cars, so like V8s and stuff like that. But um, I, I'm not sure exactly. Allora, allora dice, eh, non lo so, credo che avesse queste macchine muscolose americane, ma non, 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 ho, non ho molto, molto idea. Ma... Eh, ma quando Phil era giovane, perché Phil fra l'altro eh, i suoi zii erano i Kings, quindi viveva in quel mondo e eh, Jeff Beck c'era già, perché Jeff Beck ha iniziato ben prima di Phil Palmer, era un fan di, di, di Jeff Beck, ma Phil, quando you started, you, 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 uh, you was uh, uh, the, you, you, were, you were the nephew, the King's nephew, so you were in this world, this, this music world. Was Jeff Beck an, an idol for you or did you prefer when you were young and other kind of, of guitarists? Um, yes, probably. Um, I mean, I admired the blues players, including Eric, uh, but my main inspiration was from someone called Chet Atkins, probably, along with, um, I mean, most of the, the, the players from my generation were inspired by uh, Jeff Beck or, or someone uh, before the, the, the kind of explosion of rock music, before the Eric Clapton's and before the Jeff Beck's. And um, I, I can pretty much guarantee that uh, anybody that, that started to play the guitar in the, in the 60s, as I did, would, would have been um, inspired by uh, Chet Atkins and people like that. Pickers. People that use their fingers. I mean, Mark Knopfler was very um, inspired by by um, by Chet Atkins, and he did an album with him um, later in his, his career called Neck to Neck, which was a lovely thing. And um, I think it showed that album showed how much Mark had been influenced by Chet Atkins, as we all were, as was um, Hank Marvin, etc. Uh, you know. Chet was always the guy that everybody tried to emulate. Uh, and he, it was a difficult thing to do because he was an amazing player. Allora gli ho chiesto se lui ha iniziato in quel periodo, era molto giovane, più giovane di Jeff Beck, se era ispirato da Jeff Beck o da altri. Lui dice no, ma più che essere ispirati da Jeff Beck o da Eric Clapton, eccetera, la nostra generazione è stata ispirata a quello che c'era prima, un po' prima, o comunque diverso, che era Chet Atkins. Chet Atkins è un chitarrista strepitoso, aveva, lui usava una Gresh, una chitarra Gresh, credo, e, ed, era, ed era veramente molto, molto, molto bravo. E, e, e anche Mark Knopfler, ha detto, lui ha suonato con Mark Knopfler dei Dire Straits, e sta, ha fatto dei vari tour, era molto ispirato a Chet Atkins, ha fatto anche un disco insieme a, a Chet Atkins. Um, Phil, can, do you remember a Jeff Beck song or Jeff Beck solo to do now or not? Uh, probably no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't attempt it. I mean, he, his style became so, um, so much like Jeff Beck that I, I wouldn't be able to emulate it. It was too good. Um, but I, I love the things he did with the volume control and the, and the, the whammy bar, which was just incredibly beautiful. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just I'm noodling. I mean, it's nothing to do with Jeff Beck, really. I'm just trying to explain that um, what what he did was uh, had a 
a, a wonderful kind of mel melodic aspect to it. It was always precise. It was always clean. It was always beautifully played. Uh, he just practiced a lot. Gli ho chiesto se, se, se si ricorda era in grado di fare un brano di Jeff Beck, un solo, e lui ha detto non, non, non posso emularlo, era troppo unico. E poi ha, ha, ha detto mi piaceva questo modo suo di, 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 di usare il volume, queste cose. E poi dice lui praticava troppo, e faceva molta pratica e dice era pulitissimo, aveva un suono pulito. What are you doing? I'm trying to remember the little piece that Jeff played on, on the album. I can't remember the name of it. Something like that. Really. It was a lovely little thing, lovely little instrumental thing. Um, you know, my memory's going, so I can't remember the name of the album or the name of the piece, but I'm sure someone out there will. No, no, allora dice ehm, perché ho visto che stava me, mentre io parlavo stava, stava armeggiando con la chitarra e gli ho detto cosa stai facendo? Lui dice sto cercando di ricordare eh, un, uh, un, un brano di Jeff e poi dopo dice ma non mi ricordo il pezzo non mi ricordo l'album in realtà Phil eh, quando io ho fatto un incontro con lui e ho racimolato alcuni dei dischi dove lui ha suonato, lui non se li ricordava minimamente. E, e, Tant'è vero che gli ho suonato un pezzo di, di David Silvian, che lui ha fatto con David Silvian, e gli ho detto, dico, questo... E lui dice, ma io ho fatto questo pezzo? Sì, dico, guarda, c'è scritto David, c'è scritto Phil Palmer, sei tu. E dice, ah sì, la chitarra è mia, ma io non me lo ricordo. E dopo se l'è andato a cercare, no, a, 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 a me... Uh, I'm explaining that, that no, not only you don't remember the Jeff Beck songs, but you don't remember the songs in which you played. And he, uh, because <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Some of that David Sylvian stuff was, um, was incredible and great to play on, but um, it was a bit obscure, and so I, I never used to re revisit it. And uh, in fact, you played me a track that I, I probably hadn't heard since I actually recorded it. Um, so there's a lot of stuff like that that I, I appeared on that I don't remember, but um, you know, some good stuff I hope. <laughs> Allora si sì, dice, cioè, ci sono tante cose che non mi ricordo, ad esempio quello che ho fatto con David Silvian, dice addirittura tu me l'hai fatto ascoltare la prima volta che lo sentivo, l'avevo solo suonato ma non, non l'avevo mai, mai sentito quel pezzo, quindi lui aveva fatto la sua parte di chitarra ma probabilmente non aveva mai sentito il, il, il pezzo fi, finito. Ma tu non ti ricordi Superstition, era una canzone che Jeff, credo che Jeff wrote per Rod Stewart, no, um, Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder, they wrote it together, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a classic riff. Um. Very superstitious. It's a great riff. Yeah, great riff. Allora gli ho detto, ma non ti ricordi neanche Superstition? Superstition è un brano che hanno fatto in comproprietà praticamente Stevie Wonder e, e, e Jeff Beck. E lui ha detto sì, e dice, grande riff. Thanks a lot, Phil. Hope to meet you. I'm sorry, I've been to... My memory's not as good as it used to be. I'll do some research. I'll tell you what, I'll do some research. I'll find that the album and the tracks that I've been talking about and I'll, I'll let Yeah, yeah, well, when we meet, maybe you, you, you also have a picture of you with Jeff or not? Oh, I think that is unlikely. Uh, I don't ever remember seeing one, but there, it's probably one out there somewhere, so I haven't got one. Gli ho detto, dice, la prossima volta avrò fatto un po' di ricerca per avere un po' di memoria, ho detto, magari trovi anche una foto dove sei con Jeff Beck e lui ha detto, non mi ricordo. Cioè, eh, la, il, 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 diciamo, eh, una volta Donovan, gli ho fatto delle domande e ne sapevo più io della carriera di Donovan, di Donovan. E gli ho detto, ma scusa, come fai a non sapere? E lui ha detto... Chi ha vissuto gli anni 60 non se li ricorda. Nello stesso modo io dico che Phil, che ha suonato dovunque, eccetera, eh, non si ricorda. Io nel mio piccolo non mi ricordo neanche tutti quelli che ho intervistato. A volte mi dicono tu hai intervistato quello, io non mi ricordo. Quindi eh, eh, lui, lui ha vissuto, lui ha suonato. 
I'm telling that uh, uh, when, I, when I did an interview with Donovan, and uh, he didn't remember things that I knew. And, uh, and I said, why don't you remember? And he gave me this answer. Everyone who lived in the 60s doesn't remember the 60s. So... <laughs> a few reasons, but um, apart from it being a long time ago, there were, you know, there were, there were some pretty uh, heavy drugs going on around that time. So um, not that I was, but a lot of people were. And that would probably explain that. Uh, dice sì perché anche in quel periodo c'era molte droghe che giravano in giro e quindi questo è forse il motivo per cui non c'è dice io non ne faccio uso ma ne facevano uso so why do you, don't you remember all the songs you played even if you don't take drugs <laughs> um, I guess because there's so many of them I, I'm always looking ahead rather than back I, I try you know, you know, to live on on my laurels, I don't know if that's the right expression, but um, I like to always look forward. Um, writing my book was a, a, a bit of a, an education for me because I discovered so much stuff that I'd, I'd played on and it, it sort of went by because you're, you're always looking on, the, on onto the next gig. I think that's my excuse anyway. Allora gli ho chiesto, allora com'è che tu non ti ricordi i brani che hai, hai suonato, tutti i brani, eccetera, visto che non facevi uso di droga, non fai uso di droga, dice, dice perché io sono sempre proiettato avanti. Fra l'altro scrivere il, il mio libro è stato un modo per, per scoprire cose che avevo fatto, che non, non mi ricordavo, perché sono sempre, sto sempre pensando al prossimo concerto, eccetera. Phil, your book in Italian. We're working on it. It's a long and slow and painful and expensive process. Uh, but I, I really want to, to, to achieve an Italian version of it. I think yeah, we need a publisher. So if you know anyone out there that's prepared to, um, let me see. The best way to do it would be just to give a publisher all the files and say, here it is in English with the pictures. I need you to translate it, print it and distribute it in Italy. Yeah, allora gli ho chiesto se il suo libro uscirà anche in Italia e dice stanno cercando di un, 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 un editore che lo pubblichi ed è un libro molto interessante perché, perché la, la vita professionale di Phil Palmer umana ha attraversato tantissimi mondi eh, della musica e sono dei racconti incredibili e quindi ok uh, Phil it was è stato bello incontrarlo anche se virtualmente poi ci dobbiamo vedere eh, um, e, e niente e questo è purtroppo grazie a, al fatto che Jeff Beck ci ha lasciati uh, I'm, I'm happy to meet you again even if it's because Jeff Beck uh, left the planet it's a third day um, and it's always a pleasure to talk to you Ronnie ciao ciao Phil see you soon Wow. 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 Wow.